Okay guys, in this video, we are going to learn about property binding in Angular. Now before we get into the syntax of property binding, it is very important that you understand the difference between an HTML attribute and a DOM property. So consider an input element. Input type is equal to text and value is equal to Vishwas. Now in the browser, we have the input element filled with the string Vishwas. Now take a look at this. If I inspect this element and then in the console type $0, $0 represents the current element, which is the input element, dot get attribute of value, we can see Vishwas. Similarly, if I type $0 dot value, we can see again Vishwas. Now, if I change the text to code evolution in the input element and then repeat the same two commands, you can see that get attribute still returns Vishwas, but the value property now returns code evolution. So the attribute did not change, but the value property did change. From this example, here are some of the points you need to make note of. Attributes and properties are not the same. Attributes are defined by HTML, but properties are defined by the document object model. Attributes initialize DOM properties and then they are done. Attribute values cannot change once they are initialized. Property values, however, can change. So in our example back in the browser, the HTML attribute value specifies the initial value. The DOM value property is the current value. So the value attribute remained the same, whereas the value property changed. Now, why did I explain this? I explained it because in the code, at first glance, property binding is going to seem like we are binding to the HTML attribute, while we are actually binding to the DOM property. To avoid that confusion, I had to give you an example about attributes versus properties. So with property binding in Angular, we are actually binding to the property of the DOM element. All right, let's take a look at an example. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's create a new property and this I'm going to call it public. My ID is equal to test ID. And we need to bind this value to the HTML ID property of this input element. And here is the syntax. We enclose ID within square brackets and to this, we assign the property. And what is the property? The property is my ID. Now, if we save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that for this input element, the ID is set to test ID, which is the value of this my ID property. So we are binding to the ID property of this input element, hence property binding. But you may ask, can we not use interpolation to bind to the ID of the element? The answer is yes, you can. So I can copy this, paste it, and instead of using the square brackets and property binding, I can use double curly braces for my ID. And if you take a look at the browser, you can see that ID is still set to test ID for this input element as well. So why do we need property binding? Well there is a limitation to interpolation. It can only work with string values. And there are HTML properties that are Boolean properties that we may need to sometimes bind to. Let's take a look at an example. Consider the disabled attribute of an input element. By default, it is always set to false. So the input is always enabled. Now let's add the disabled attribute. And now if you take a look at the browser, you can see that the second input element is disabled. And back in our code, now let's try to set this disabled attribute to false, so false. And if you take a look at the browser again, you can see that the input is still disabled. So this is a problem with Boolean attributes such as disabled. When you add the disabled attribute, its presence alone initializes the input's disabled property to true, so the input is disabled. Setting the value to false has no effect. 
And because it is a Boolean attribute that needs true or false, interpolation doesn't work. So if I even set this to false within double curly braces, head back to the browser, the input is still disabled. So the solution here is to use property binding. So instead of using double curly braces, which does not work, we are going to enclose disabled within square brackets and then assign it either true or false. Now that we have set it to false, it means the input is not disabled. And if you go back to the browser, you can see that both the input elements are enabled. I can type anything I want to. And back in code, if we set disabled to true and then go back to the browser, you can see that the second input element is now disabled. Of course, hard coding true or false is not of much use. So let's create a property in the class and then bind it. So I'm going to add a new property. I'm going to call this public is disabled and set it to true. Now, instead of binding it to a true or false value, we bind it to the is disabled property. Right now, is disabled is set to true. So in the browser, the second input element is still disabled. Go back to the code, set is disabled to false. And in the browser, the second input element is not disabled anymore. Again, I am changing the value manually, but you can control the property based on user interactions or some other data. For example, you can toggle the disabled property of an input or a button based on a mouse click that the user performs while filling out a form. Finally, there is an alternate syntax for property binding. So instead of using the square brackets, you can use bind hyphen with the attribute name. So remove the square brackets and use bind hyphen. So if we take a look at the browser, both inputs are enabled. Well, that is about property binding in Angular. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.